here. He's here. Welcome, welcome. So I'm give a couple minutes for everybody to get in. Um, I know like there with everything going, a lot of folks will take time to just come in and actually they're all coming in now. It's called being late and I don't <laughs> think we should reward people for being late. Well, with the, 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 the market sure isn't, especially these days, they're not rewarding anybody for being late. So it's a lot, a lot of interesting stuff going on. To start off, off topic, did you hear that Christie's uh, had to pay $100 million in back taxes because they didn't pay taxes to the state of New York for like maybe 10 years? <laughs> <laughs> so on top of that, they had to fire, uh, I think it's like 20% of their employees. So well, it's uh at least the employees will be getting unemployment. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully, you know, with every with the rise in unemployment, I wonder if anything is gonna even be there. So I mean it's that's, it's exciting. That's, that's the times we live in. That oh, yeah. is. That is. So like one of like a couple of things, you know, just to kind of like go over like I guess kind of like the syllabus for today. Um, you know, we talked about before, a lot of stuff I want to go over today is like the economics of how artists would be able to survive, recover, restart uh, during this period. Um, arts businesses, how they are going to have to change their business models to um, deal with everything that's going on right now. Um, and also the economic. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, let's, I guess let's start. What's the, what's the craziest art story you've heard since, uh, <laughs> since the COVID lockdown? Oh, I'll tell you a funny one. I'll <laughs> tell you a real funny one. There was this, um, uh, I, I, uh, there was this guy on the, uh, in the art world. Uh, I don't even want to say who, and, uh, he uh, posted a, a funny photo of him and two other dudes having dinner and they're all touching elbows like ha 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 you know look we're social distancing right yeah and um he did it for laughs and people laid into him on facebook you gotta be quarantining like <laughs> and they were raging yeah you know, the funniest thing is one of them was this woman artist who i blocked years ago because she's just a rager Mm -hmm. and uh Lori lipton and it was awesome to just see like oh okay this is you know why but then other people just jumped on the bandwagon about like mm -hmm. and then and then so then the next day the the post has all the comments erased and then there's like wow. new comments going oh this is so oh it looks like you had a nice dinner or something and then the next day the post is completely gone so people can't handle wow uh, people can't handle the confrontation and mm -hmm. so so you're, you're seeing this kind of interesting um i believe uh, I mean, I've sort of had a bit of a career in in confronting shit, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's not the um, it's not the craziest thing for me. Yeah, but it, you you see how rare absolute person to person confrontation. You'll get a lot of this. Oh, artists shouldn't do this, or mm -hmm. galleries shouldn't do that. Can you name a gallery that did that? Oh, <laughs> you know. So so finally, it's like wow. There's you know people are just saying, hey, you know what? You're full mm -hmm. of shit. Yeah, and, and, yeah. Um, which is good. I think it's a good thing, and and uh, you know I'm I'm you know and then and then you know, but then we have to extrapolate now. You know, if eighty yeah. percent of the people mm -hmm. in, if eighty percent of the people in uh, France, who have died from uh, from COVID, according to one doctor there or the one health minister there, eighty percent of them are uh, obese. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. but we're not supposed to fat shame. We're not supposed to fat shame. Yep. Body yep. positivity. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's ingrained into the brain that somebody doing that might be somebody who doesn't consider No, no, we can't talk about it. you know, yeah. so 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 we've got these whole these whole set of rules that we can't uh and it's not just the art world. I think the art yeah. world the art world is always like a magnifying glass of the book. Oh, it, it it exacerbates it for sure. Most totally. definitely. So, Most so, definitely. so you know, there's the the shamers have always been out in the art world. And so um I think it's good that, that people that there's this confrontation going on. Uh, and, and maybe maybe that'll be one good thing to come to come out of this. Do you, do you think during this confrontational period, people are fun, learning more about their collectors, their gallerists and collectors learning more about artists, you know, background, you know, these new rules, new ways of doing things that people are actually starting to take the time to look 
at what they purchase, at who they deal with, what galleries they mess around with, because of now everything is kind of slowed down? Well, look, the slowdown means one thing, and that is likely is that you're spending more time online, mm -hmm. I just assume. Although I talked to one collector, and, um, and he's like, oh, you know what? You're the first person. Uh, he, he was actually, actually asking me about this one artwork. Mm -hmm. that he owned that I sold him that was it was he was asking about do I remember something about it, it more about the physical thing like like you know where do I get a frame that good or something yeah like that. and and um but he said oh this is the first time I've been online I go really he goes yeah he goes mm -hmm. I'm just reading books he goes I have so many books mm -hmm. that I, I was like oh okay but with that said most of us are spending time online yeah uh more time online than even normal most uh, definitely spend a lot of time and I think that the um I think one interesting thing is that uh, uh, you start to like not like people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't to, I don't know how to better say it, but a lot of people, especially when they don't share, they say certain things. Oh, look, I talk shit. Uh, yeah. I, I said something the other day about I made fun of conspiracy theorists, and, and I actually got an old, old friend defriended me. Just I, yeah, I, I have a program that it's called Facebook Purity, mm -hmm. and you can see who defriends you wow. you know, when someone defriends you. Uh, <laughs> And so when I opened, I opened that on a different separate browser, installed on a separate browser. Mm -hmm. So I just go in and I made this really like, I just said that basically most conspiracy theorists are like, you know, just people who didn't go too far in life. And there's a lot of, you know, weird, <laughs> weirdness, whatever. I talked shit. Yeah. And somebody just, and they're, and, but their, their picture for Facebook is it 5G with a slash through it. Mm. Yeah, everybody's on the 5G kit. 5G yeah. causes coronavirus. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I, I, yeah. So, 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 but, but people are going to get sick of me. People are going to get sick of you and people are going to get sick of other people. So, um, and, but there's been oversharing already online. Like, you know, if, if a gallerist, let's say you're a collector and you're buying art mm -hmm. and a gallerist is very politically opposite you and is really proud and sharing that at some mm -hmm. point. Yeah. yeah. You know what? So, so, so I think that's one thing that we're, uh, we're going to be confronting. Um, I found that actually interesting because it seemed, I remember last year, and I think it was Nuchin Gallery and a few other galleries when they were, you know, talking about every, you know, the gallerist affiliation to Trump, you know, and all this stuff. Yeah, and they're yeah. saying everybody shouldn't go to his gallery, shouldn't go to that. And then you have a, a segment of the population that's like, you know, I don't, I don't give a damn about any of that. That's where the quality is. Do you see, do you see that uh, kind of shifting or changing or maybe staying the same as far as that okay. overshare? Well, put it this way, uh, here, here, artists, here's the thing. Artists have to think two years ahead all the time, mm -hmm. okay? Two years ahead. So in two years, they'll have a vaccine or we'll all be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, either way, um, I don't know that artists, uh, like, you know, like if you get in, if you paint yourself into a, look, I, I come from the opposite. Instead of saying, oh, this gallery is, uh, morally reprehensible because they're Trump supporters or something. Mm -hmm. You know, over the years, I talked all kinds of shit about different uh, galleries mm -hmm. and different people in the art world. And, um, you know, I got, basically, I didn't get invited to parties for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the wisest career move yeah. I could have ever made. I mean, in the, the you know, the long game is that I'm, you know, kind of announcing that you know, if I say something, I really mean it. And yeah. there's some integrity here, et cetera, et cetera, Validity. blah, blah, yeah. blah. But, but um, so, so, you know, will we even remember all this shit in two or three years? You right. know, so, <laughs> but, you know, the, 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 you know, if you get, if you get online right now and you uh, see somebody saying, ah, you know what, I, I think people are too hard on Trump and you say, fuck this guy and you defriend him. And two years from now, this guy's like the hottest curator in town mm -hmm. and calls you for a studio visit and says, oh, I thought we were Facebook friends. Oh, I thought so too. Let me you. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know any, you know. So, yeah, I'm sure you know, that's happened a lot. You yeah, know, so, you know. so, there's, so there's a lot of that going on. Um, but yeah, with that said, uh, you know, the, o the oversharing is going to get you into trouble on Facebook. That's, there, that's, that's my best advice. The oversharing is going to get so so you know if you if you you know don't don't talk about um you know you know there's just certain things that, yeah but you know i used to you know i used to drink i used to go to the bars and, mm -hmm. and there was a sign in the bar that was it really summed up how to have um 
casual friendships, which mm. which is basically networking relationships as far as the art world's concerned or, yep. or anything. And it said it had it said the three no's. And it said no politicking, no preaching, mm. no peddling. Mm. Okay, and what that meant is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. peddling is like a peddler. Don't sell me. Don't don't start a relationship with me trying to sell it's me something. Sell me. Yep. You know, yep. and any any good gallerist will tell you that the the best way is is the the no sale of like, hey, I'm just a good guy. I represent these artists. I'm very enthused about them. Mm -hmm. And if you get enthused about them too, let's talk. Just but let if you me want, know. Them, yep. hey, I yep. want to sell you something. It 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 it, it, it doesn't work. Or, or, I mean, I've done that. Hey, I know you collect such and such. If you need it, you know, but get it over with quick. But yeah. but as far as social relationships, so there you are in the bar, no peddling. So, so don't come into this bar thinking that you're going to use it as a place to sell people stuff. Most definitely. And that's, which is, which is uh, um, whether or not you are um, an, like an artist, it's one thing to say, well, I'm selling myself, my brand. No, you're not. You're, but you're not, you're not saying like, oh, hey, um, you should, hey, well, you're a friend of mine. You should buy this kind of paint that I'm selling, bullshit mm -hmm. like that. Okay, so second thing was uh, no preaching, okay? I don't need your religion, you don't need mine. I don't, you know, no matter what I believe, I'm not here to, <laughs> you, know, like yeah. so just, you know? But the one thing that, that has, um, you really see in Facebook and it's really divided people's people, poly they talk politics. Yep. politics. And there's a reason yep. you don't talk politics. And you think, oh, well, okay, like, like, like for example, uh, this guy says to me, big art world guy, by the way, this was mm -hmm. a big art world guy. And, um, I was at a, it was at a, it was I remember very very clearly this is two or three years ago when things weren't even anywhere near as polarized as they are now and a guy says to me he goes he goes oh um I don't understand the conservatives you know we just we got to find a way to dialogue we got to find a way to dialogue and I say to him I go you know when most people say we got to find a way to dialogue mm -hmm. it means I want you to listen to me but I'm not going to listen listen to you. to you yep and he's yep. like oh no 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 we got to find a way to dialogue I said okay let's dialogue. I'm, I'm Democrat, I'm liberal, you know, I'm, and I'm probably, ironically, I'm probably more liberal than this idiot. But anyway, <laughs> I go, um, I go, uh, what do you think about guns? Mm -hmm. Oh, gun control, we need gun control. We need to take all those rednecks guns away. I said, well, you know what? Uh, did you live in LA uh, in 92 during the, no, I, I wasn't here during the riots. Uh, and he's like, uh, or pardon me, the uprising. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so he goes, oh, um, I go, see, you've never been through a riot. Let me tell you, I went through the LA riots, man. Mm -hmm. I was in a part of town with a curfew, yep. uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what? All of a sudden, you start thinking, wow, mm -hmm. what a good come for me, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, if I, could, if I could shoot a gun off. That make a big difference, right? Yeah. So, you know, all of a sudden, this guy could not handle it. Yeah. No, no. and I go, well, "Where's your dialogue, dude? Mm -hmm. I'm not even re I'm not even Republican. I'm not even conservative." Yeah. You know, I'm not a born again or nothing, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, so here you are saying dialogue, and the minute I say I have seen actually experienced a circumstance where it would be good to, you think in the back of your head, "Oh shit, it would be good to have a gun." I've actually experienced that. And you can't even handle that because you're so rigid. Yeah. And that's why that's so, so that, that to me was the last time I even broached politics because the next time I saw the guy, he's like, are you still a gun nut? <laughs> and I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> so, so that's, so, 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 so you know. We're I mean, all that's kind of be... like, that's kind of like us as critics though, right? You know what I mean? If we, if we say, hey, you know, this, this facet of the market or this art show was shit or this is a terrible uh, approach, you know, we're looked at as, oh, you're the guy that still shits on this artist or you're the guy that shits on that or you're the guy that shits on that. It's almost labeling you, you know, 100%, 100%. Listen, I, I've eaten more shit for the stuff I've written mm -hmm. and I stand, I mean, a very few things I've changed my mind on. Yeah, a, a few times, and and um, very, and and it's more often that people come around to me going, "Oh, you were right about that idiot." Yeah. Oh yeah, you said this about that person, or you said this about that type of art. And, yeah, you mm -hmm. were right. People, people will finally admit it, you know. So you got most, most of the look, most of the art writing in the United States. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for Europe. I don't know. I don't know anything about Latin America. Um, but I can say in the United States, most of the art writing is is hired. 
yes. by, by the person getting reviewed. I mean, or yep. by the gallery getting the review. It's not, it used to be the third party publication mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would be, um, the third party publication would be who was, um, who was going after you, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, and, uh, that's a thing of the past, you know? Yeah. And, and if you think these people writing for these third party publications, how are they choosing what they write about? If you don't exactly. think there's a little grease in the uh, machine, you're crazy. Exactly. You know? and, and, I, and I seen that uh, when reading the latest Artnet article about, you know, the 23 arts clubs that joined together to create this special grant, you know, that's supposed to help employ and, you know, mm -hmm. stimulate the art world and, and, and do all of that. And it's like, why now you know what 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 makes you think of it now you know like what 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 what's behind this grant what what's behind all of these motives you know is it political you know is it something to where they say oh you're the you're the, the organization you're the guy you're the lady you're the gallerist that funded me when i was down so i guess you're good now and let's let's all you know come to your shows let's come to your you know everything that you're doing is good kind of like you know, with the, the free mocha thing, you know, every time it comes, it's free mocha. Now everybody's, you know, joining in to the folks that, you know, now, <laughs> now are all of a sudden, you know, good folks. You know, mm -hmm. just a year ago, people were bashing the board and doing all the good stuff about that. Um, now, all of a sudden, that little political move mm -hmm. has made them, you know, good in the eyes of uh, the patron sector, the collector sector and the artist sector. How do you think that political play will start to affect artists production coming up? Well, here, here's the thing. There, there's a grant uh, with the highest integrity. It's the Pollock Krasner mm -hmm. grant. Mm -hmm. Basically it's, it's uh, and it's, it's, it's uh, administered by this guy. I, I've never met this guy. I, mean, I have no, I have no stake in this. Um, the guy's Jason McCoy, which was mm -hmm. Jackson Pollock's nephew, mm -hmm. um, okay. you know? And so uh, they're totally legit. Mm -hmm. And they give they give money to artists. Yeah. You want a Pollock Krasner grant? The Rauschenberg Foundation, they give emergency grants mm -hmm. to artists. Like if you had a um uh you know, an artist I know had a uh major hospital bill after a sudden illness. Mm -hmm. Rauschenberg Rauschenberg could they, they wired the money to that hospital so wow. this guy could get a surgery. Yeah, this wow. is years ago, but it still it still exists. I mean they you know, th these are legit things. But Rauschenberg mm -hmm. Pollock, these are the you know big They're names. The, yeah, the, the big course, names big of the art world. world. Yeah. Yeah. So when you get the small names that want to be big, trying some stunt like this, I want you to name your grant to prove that it's not a stunt. I want you to name it the Complete Stranger Grant. Mm -hmm. Okay, because <laughs> that's what Rauschenberg and the Pollock Krasner Foundation they yeah. give grants to. They don't know. I mean, I don't. You know. They, yeah, they just, you know, it doesn't they had, matter who you are in the market. It, it's based yeah. on merit. Well, it's, and and it doesn't matter if you know. I don't know this person, so mm -hmm. I want to give. I want to give a complete stranger a grant. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're talking about something. Now I'm impressed. But as far as all these initiatives popping up, I mean, uh, you know, the Getty's got ten million dollars for arts. Mm -hmm. So will that be going to the same organizations that the Getty always gives grants to? So most likely, basically, all they did was oh, and you know, in 2019. We gave 100 million in grants, and in 2020 we gave 110 million in grants. Well, that 10 was for COVID. So I, I, I mean, what are you doing that that is? When people say they're responding to the crisis, a mm -hmm. crisis means business not as usual. Yeah. But what if a lot of these grant giving organizations is business as usual. So the same people oh, are going to get the same friends. You know, oh, you know, two more people on the board. Well, mm -hmm. I know three on the board, so I'm going to get a bigger grant than they're you. Grant than you, I mean, yeah. You know, that's that's I'm not I mean, the, not just the art world. Any, any work, any, any world. yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I liken it to you know, like our, our country's stimulus package. You know, like with with certain artists being um, having their their leverage in the art market with mm -hmm. their work selling for a certain price. You know, hitting an mm -hmm. auction, secondary market. The art market, in a sense, has an interest in these artists staying afloat. Just like, you know, there's certain oh, business. Oh, yeah. We have a Fortune 500 list of artists that they drop on Artnet, Art News every year, you know, with the top artists and they're rating mm -hmm. them. There, there's a ranking system for a reason. And there's, you know, this leading artist, this top of the tree artist, and then there's three or four artists that are understudies oh, yeah. or that come after them. So this, I see these grants um, not necessarily as helping artists. Yeah, they're helping artists. For example, the people these these are artists, 
but these are the leading 10% that are keeping these institutions, auction houses, and other arts, arts um, organizations afloat because they own these works. So they're stimulating their own pocket. Absolutely. Um, and it's I think their that's portfolio. Where, that's their portfolio. And I think a lot of um, artists are tricked, you know, thinking that, um, yeah, you know, these grants are going to get, I mean, I've had a few artists say, hey, you know, I'm going to apply, I'm going to apply. And I'm like, you know, good luck. I really hope you get it, but you should really try to put some other measures in place that will allow you to achieve that type of money uh, uh, in a different way without having to put yourself in a pool of 10 million, you know, even even greater pool, you know, when you tell, hey, it's free. Look, I always advise artists to think two years out. So mm -hmm. fine, apply for a grant, apply for every grant. You know, it's like going to the DMV. That's actually mm -hmm. what pisses me off is that you, it's like, oh, you're an artist. And all of a sudden the artists who succeed are the ones who accelerate at doing business as usual, at, at standing in line at the DMV, at yeah. answering questions of bureaucrats. That, I hate yeah. that, I hate that. But, but fine, it, apply for all the ones or, you know, get an assistant, have them apply or, or do whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Your kids, you have to homeschool your kids for three months. Teach them how to fill out art grants. They might figure out how to do it better. Exactly. Than you, okay? <laughs> how about that? So, so, how about that? So, hey, now some homeschooling. We can That's all benefit homeschool. from. Yeah, we do. Every, <laughs> but I, I'm telling you, look, look. Here's here's my main point. Um, as far as this whole thing goes out, you got to be thinking about the world two years from now. So you ask yourself, okay, is this COVID thing going to really change stuff? If it is, are there going to be galleries? Because okay, what do galleries require? Mm -hmm. People leaving their homes. Uh, mm -hmm. People seeing people seeing objects in person, not watching it on Netflix. Yep. Um, so, so, you know, I mean, are there going to be galleries in the sense what's, why do you want to be in a gallery? Cause see, to me, conceptually, the, a gallery, what it really is, is it's a validation of the artist's ego. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, you mm -hmm. know, for years I had a, I had a physical gallery and what I really had was a way, you know, artists pursued me validating their ego through their this ego. gallery. Yep. And you, you yep. meet people, I don't care if we don't sell. Hey, I do. I got to pay the rent. But it was yeah. more about validating yes. their ego. So, you know, and, and I have a list of who they are. So, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but you got to think two years out. For example, art fairs. Yes. You got to fly to the art fair. Or the art fair has to have a lot of people show up. Do, what percentage of people are going to really become agoraphobic after this? Mm. You know, are we looking at 10% mm -hmm. of the U.S. population is now a stay-at-home population? Yep. Fun fundamentally healthy, went out to the movies, went to restaurants, art openings, you rode their bike, and now they're not, they won't, they're done. And it's, we're never going to see them again. It's funny you say that because like I'm looking at uh, the art market report and one of the quotes I had saved, and it was talking about the majority of the high net worth uh, collectors, high net worth individuals concerned about their carbon footprint in the market, concerned about them going to too many art fairs, concerned about them going to too many galleries, too many exhibitions. Do you think this will give them that reason to completely slow all that shit up and really focus on the surety market? You know what I mean? Like I'm going to focus on these maybe 10 or 15 galleries, almost like, almost like stock options. I'm going to focus on these 10 or 15 galleries. I'm going to learn them in depth. I'm going to learn more about their roster in depth and to only buy or deal and do business with these galleries because they're at the top of that surety market. There, oh, look, a lot of collectors were doing that already. Mm -hmm. And a lot of art consultants are doing that already. And then a lot of, a lot of people are like, they, they give their art consultant permission to buy anything from these 15 fairs. Yep. And these people, yep. they just went to art fairs, but you know, now I don't know that people are going to be flying as much. Mm -hmm. I don't know that art, art fairs are going to attract the business that they had attracted. Mm -hmm. I don't know that art fairs are going to draw the crowds. I don't know that, uh, people are going to pay the high bucks, the big bucks for the, I mean, Hell no, not for the boots. Free, free <laughs> art basil. They're not going to have a problem, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but all those satellite fairs. But mm -hmm. like, do you think like with art basel, art basel, most people don't realize art basel has been struggling for a few years. You know, the MCH group is, they've, they've been doing a little, they've been, you know, <laughs> art, art market wise yet yeah, they've been doing well, but as but, far as them as a company, They've well, been, they're they're know, part of a bigger conglomerate. They're like yeah. you know three percent of the thing's business or whatever. So I yeah. think it's to them it's it's a brand thing because mm -hmm. even like for mm -hmm. example, if you own that billion dollar, hundred billion trillion dollar company, whatever it is, if you owned it and and Art Basel isn't doing good, you can always use it as like um, 
uh, it's like owning it's like owning a baseball team or a football team. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they lose money, it's like all your other businesses. It's like oh, they're owned by the guy who yeah. owns the Lakers, <laughs> yeah, you know, or whatever. Yeah. You know? The Jim Bus approach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, yeah, Dr. Buss. I want to invest with him because he owns the Lakers. Because he owns and then the Lakers, you, yeah. Maybe you lose your money. I don't know. So, but, yeah. and, like, with, with that approach, too, do you think um, the that thought process of going to these fairs and all that, of I'm going to go to Art Basel because it's Art Basel. I'm going to go to Freeze because it's Freeze, even though it loses me fifty to $100,000 a year because I bring an emerging artist that no one knows. Oh, you're, do you think that will change? As a, gallery, as a gallery. As a gallery. Yeah, as a gallery. As a gallery's point of view, you're going to see a big weeding of the garden. Mm -hmm. So then the problem that the, the fairs are going to have is do the gallery... Uh, let, let me say, okay, like right now they have, let's say they have whatever number they have. I think it's 200. Let's say that Art Basel has 200. Do they have a smaller fair of mm -hmm. the the guaranteed slam dunk that surety the, the that surety quote, unquote, market. Right, yeah, yeah, the surety yep. galleries or do they start taking people who can pay for it because plenty of galleries can afford that because they have money from other sources but the art mm -hmm. sucks yep and so now here's the problem in my opinion the art at basil already sucks <laughs> <laughs> right there. so the problem is the surety has been the biggest con yeah and, it's, and it really is so much of it really is just a club yeah and uh there just isn't the uh, radical um my hand hurts i'm holding this goddamn phone so much <laughs> i'm gonna try to mound it oh god i can't hold on <laughs> there's my front yard hold on give me a sec here i know the rain is killing us today yeah oh god i think the rain is great for uh for la not i don't care about the oh yeah crowd. we need the rain well, we I don't definitely the need the rain it just keeps people indoors yeah here wait can i i'm trying to mount a, wait can i turn this upside down no it'll it'll, it'll make you upside down well no you it made you upside down not yeah, me yeah so it'll flip us both <laughs> okay that's that's a cool uh wait where did it go that's a carly fernandez oh you can't see there there's glare uh, she's naked i can see a little bit of it yeah she's she's wearing a bear mask from a from a taxidermy bear and then she's naked but there's the glare of my window and that's a quilt my mother made so nice hey moms my That's, mom made nope. that. Yeah. I thought that was a Labiel piece. <laughs> it's it's lingerie. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna unplug my phone and go to my my living room. I got a Labiel there. She gave me and my wife for our wedding. Nice. My wife's sitting next to me. I stealthily avoided <laughs> any picture of you. <laughs> any. She just gave me the finger. Okay. So <laughs> so here is that's a Labiel kind nice. of like quilt. It's huge. Labiel is dope. Look, it takes up the whole, whole uh, wall there. It's pretty cool. Labiel is dope. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So so I don't know. So basically, where I did my train of thought was that are these art fairs going to um, are these art fairs going to just shrink? Mm -hmm. And they have the surety galleries. They have a hundred of them because a bunch of them go out of business. Are yeah. they going to try new things? They're going to have because the, the new galleries. I don't care what anybody says. They're the new gallerists are always vetted. They're always, you know, from their, from their, you know, they have the right connections. They're already mm -hmm. in the club when they get in there. It's Most not definitely. like they're, they're not auditioning anybody. I mean, they're certainly seeing how people behave, but they've already been vetted for, mm -hmm. uh, okay, you can, you play our game. You don't, you don't play another game. And, uh, you know, there's, there's many rules to that. So, um, ooh, how's this? That's my ceiling. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Now, can I, I'm trying to sit on my table. Oh, that's better. That's that's much more. Yeah, well, I mounted it. Yeah, but see, look. there. Uh... Yeah, you got to reach back a little bit. <laughs> there you go. So if you move a little bit closer, it might be, it might be oh, cool. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Sweet. So, oh, okay. so with, with that being said, like, we have these different economies, you know, inside of the art market, you know, these traditional economies, you know, like the art fairs, the art exhibitions, the museum shows and all of that. Um, these command economies like, you know, OK, this collector needs once this commission, you know, this pub, this public art, you know, piece needs to be done. And then these market economies, which we talk about, uh, like, let's say auction, you know, this primary market, secondary market. How do you see those changing, you know, for artists of like, you know, what to produce, how to produce and who to produce it for? Well, you have to just like I always say, OK, two years from now, mm -hmm. will the economy be bouncing back? If so, what kind of objects will people want? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
one thing for sure, um, one thing for absolute sure is, uh, I'm trying to figure this is the best way to, to, to describe this. We've all spent more time in our house now, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think that bodes very well for the long-term art object makers. Mm. You follow? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, the problem is, uh, w you know, with the economy bouncing back, how many buyers are there really going to be? But mm. I, 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 if I see one major change for the art world, it's a positive change. More people will have spent time in their house to the point that they will know what kind of art they want in that house. Hmm. So I, I see that as a positive for, for uh, art and artists. Do you, uh, do you think that'll end up turning like, like the opposite where they know which art they want in their house now, so now they're selling shit? Shit that they bought off of impulse before, so now they're like, hey, you know, this totally does not fit for my collection. I don't know what direction I was going in, but this isn't it. So do you think this will allow that to happen? Mm, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, basically, what you're really asking me are, is, are people going to be clearer about their taste? About their taste, exactly, exactly. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, I mean, look, what are people doing now? People aren't going to museums. They aren't going to galleries. And, and, and here's the thing. Galleries want to keep you in, in, in their corral. Mm -hmm. And what I mean mm -hmm. by that, like, like um, I've watched gallerists over the years. There's a gallerist, I won't say who, at, at Bergamont. And, and I watched this guy. And when, when he talked to big, big collectors mm -hmm. who I could spot, you're at Bergamont. There's 20 galleries, right? So you yeah. go into one, you go into there, you go into, and you go into his. And you know what he would do after you went into his? He would walk you to your car. Whoa. Think about that. Whoa. You're at Bergamont to go see 20 galleries. But this guy would sit there and chat up, big collectors, and I saw him do it time and time and time again. He would walk them to their car. Oh, shit. And uh, there was something. So, so what I, now I'm, my postulation about the COVID thing here is like, like those, there, nobody's walking to your car. You're, anytime you want to get in the art world at any time, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you, you, you got to, um, uh, what's the word? What's the word here? Like, like you, you, I, I can't, I, I'm a gallerist. Let's say I can't corral you yeah. anymore. So, so it used to be, you'd come to my gallery, maybe you went to two or three others, you went to some art fairs. I was at the art fair. So the, there was a validation of me, yeah. and a validation yep. of the fair and a comfort level for you. A yep. lot of that's going to go by the wayside. So do we end up with a wider open, uh, do we end up with a wider open art world? And look, are there going to be galleries in two years? I mean, we don't know. Will there well, be artists? At least the same way we know them. You know, yeah, like... well, brick and mortar galleries. But then if you have, oh, this whole online viewing room thing ain't going to last, man. That ain't cutting it. Yeah, like that's that's my, that was going to be one of my questions, too. Is like, how do you see that as a replacement? Not, not even a replacement, but as an added attribute Ooh. to business. Because it's okay. literally taking away, for, for, for that artist that creates objects, like we talk about, how does an online viewing room really support their practice when you can't see the texture, you know, the size, you know, scale, everything about everything that's part of why they create that piece? They're losing that with the online viewing room. How does that help that artist? <laughs> it, it, the only thing that helps them is being represented by a name gallery. A name gallery. People, people see that brand and they trust. Yeah. Because uh, other than that, uh, I, I don't see it, uh, you know, I'm going to get right into the light. How's that? Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, oh, hey, that's a Gronk. Oh, nice. Yeah. Here, let's see the Gronk. But, yeah, I don't, I, don't see, uh, I don't see online viewing rooms helping galleries, a traditional gallery model, the art fair model. I don't see any of that. I mean, at some point, it'll be like, you know, you could have the highest quality viewing room. Or, or you know, there's a really good website, Art and Practice has a website where you can go in and see the show and then you walk by. So the show's mounted in the gallery and then you walk and you can click on each artwork. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. But I, I was like, that's cool. But, but I can go onto the internet at any time and get visual, visually interesting experiences that mm -hmm. are not 
mediated as art. Why do we, I don't need that mediation to have a great visual experience online on that digital screen. Exactly. I may need the mediation when I'm a collector and I'm buying, you know, I'm spending a hundred thousand dollars at a major gallery, mm -hmm. but, but you follow me now. So, yeah. so, so, so there's no me. So I don't see the online presentation of art uh, outside of name brand art. So, Oh, I have an Ed Ruscha for sale. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, you know, some drawings by the architect, Philip Johnson. Oh, that's a name. But if I have yeah. architectural drawings by Joe Blow, nobody cares. Exactly. So, so exactly. you know, unless they're like of a building with Batman on it and the guy likes bat, you know, the buyer likes Batman. Batman. Yeah. You know, I, and I, I'm competing with the lunch boxes. Right. Yeah. I, I think, especially for larger institutions like museums, foundations, I think the physical space was their selling point, you know, because right now in this day and time, what, what fucking stops me from putting on a Basquiat show? If I go on Google and I research research all the Basquiat pieces I love. What an idea! And, <laughs> and I do a fucking Basquiat show on Instagram with a separate The Basquiat Show Instagram with all of these different photos. What makes, what stops you from coming to my museum? Over Why are we doing that right now? It, what are we doing My point exactly. Before? You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like all of that credibility, that leverage that the museum has can completely go out the fucking door because but, but, if Joe Blow wants to create his but, own, look, you know. Look, this is a temporary situation. We're indoors yeah. till the end of the month, till May, till June, even till the end of summer with a collapsed economy. There's still going to be people want to go to physical spaces. We're going to have more shut-ins than ever before. But, you know, you know, people are still going to want to send, people are definitely going to want to send their kids to school. Yeah, <laughs> so, <hell yeah. laughs> oh, man, the number one complaint on uh, Facebook. So, yeah. so, so yeah. that's, so, so. The idea that, you know, I mean, if you're a gallery and you say, oh, let's spend $100,000 and make the greatest viewing room ever, you know, uh, if I go in there and I see something I don't like, I'm just going to go to Netflix and never come back yeah, to the gallery. And never come back. Yeah. Exactly. So, so. Exactly. So how, do you think that, that the online viewing room and the, the, the jumping on of it um, has been a sense of preserving competition? Yes, no. absolutely. It's just it, 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 the, the, I think they're very smart in that they're doing something now temporary. But if, yeah. it, it, for example, if somebody hits you up tomorrow, like, hey, I'm getting into the art fair viewing room business. That's, not good. <laughs> that's that's that's, uh, you know, that's that's going to. Um, yeah, that that's not a wise business to get into because, I mean, it's basically a website. Right. You know? Now, now that's a good question. So now. Do you think that the galleries, because, you know, our Basel just did its Hong Kong viewing room. Do you think that galleries that participated in that can count that against their exhibition list as I showed at Art Basel? Oh, they will. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah they will. They will. There's no, there's no, I mean, you know. We'll collect but a little I, difference. I, yeah. I mean, th look, this is temporary. Mm -hmm. I think the bigger thing we should be talking about it really is the economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long is it going to take? Is the economy going to bounce back? faster than it did here let me let me give you an example yeah i worked at i managed a big gallery gallery c in 2007 mm -hmm. and 2008 in 2007 october 2007 the stock market peaked mm -hmm. and slowly started going down in january of 2008 bear stearns closed it was a big i don't know mm -hmm. anything about wall street but i know mm -hmm. bear stearns closed and i know gallery c closed very soon after uh, and, and wisely because they saved a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, because the money pit was gone. But people are, oh, no, no, just hang in there. In September of 2008, nine months later, Lehman Brothers, boom, mm -hmm. and that was it. And we hit a major, major recession. Now, go back to 2007. So let's say that right now we're in 2007. Mm -hmm. let's, actually, let's just say we're in 2008, that this is happening faster and we've already had uh, Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers. That's, yeah. that, that was COVID. Okay. That yeah, was COVID. Yeah, that was, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Now, two, September of 2008. Okay. In April of 2012, I opened my gallery. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, follow me on this. In April of 2012, 
that is three and a half years after uh, Lehman Brothers, mm -hmm. I opened my gallery. I had articles written in the New York Observer. I had articles written in Modern Painters Magazine in England. International magazines were covering the fact that Mac Leeson was opening a gallery. Mm -hmm. Now, I was already known in the art world, fine, but, but what it really was was someone's opening a gallery. Someone's doing it, yeah. Nobody. Yeah. So that's three and a half years mm. after the carpet got pulled. Okay. And, and yeah. last week, the carpet got pulled. Level, okay. Yep. Yep. So maybe with this trillion dollar stimulus, it'll be only two and a half years or one and a half years. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of these people on the internet who says, here's what's going to happen. I don't fucking know what's going to happen, but yeah. I can tell you, here's what happened. So no, so what I'm saying is in April of 2012, when I opened, nobody was opening nobody. galleries. And, and let me tell you, the, the news just was in a like, wow, you know, there's somebody's opening a gallery in LA. So, yeah. so, so if you're an artist and you're thinking, well, okay, I'm gonna make some art and have a gallery show, who's gonna be opening a gallery in two and a half, three, three and a half years from now? That's who you gotta figure out. But in, 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 a, in a kind of like a, a, a 180 type of question, does that validate the gallery show more in two years? Because you're able to get a gallery show to where that gallerist is taking a chance on you to where it's like, okay, I really believe in this artist because I got to fucking pay rent. And I know that this artist will at least help supplement some of that. Do you think that'll bring more validation to those type of shows? Well, no, I mean, I mean the gallery exists as a ego validation for the artist. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. that, you know what? Here's an artist. Yep, yep. Okay, now let's talk about the business side of it. Okay, <laughs> okay. that's that's uh, that, that's basically where we're at here. Okay, so don't don't um, don't don't mistake it. Yeah. The, the the question you have for art for 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 art business people, what you really got to say, like, here's something for art business people. Here's something really good. I got good news if you're in the art business. Yeah. Guess what's going to collapse more than anything, even more than the mm. art world. Guess what's going to collapse in this recession? What's that? Commercial real estate. What are Ooh. galleries? They mm. are commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a mm -hmm. gallery right now and your lease is up, or you're smart like me, the astrologer who saw it coming, and you say, I'm going to close my gallery. Hey, then we had COVID. The commercial real estate opportunities for long-term commercial real, real estate leasors Mm -hmm. A year from now, two years from now, things were $5 a square foot, $2 a square foot, $3 a square foot. Here in LA where we do square foot by a month, mm -hmm. you know, we do per month instead of New York where they say, they say $24 square foot. It means $2 a square $2. foot. Per yeah. Year. yeah. Okay. So yep. math. Um, but <laughs> so, so you gotta, so you, you know, so now if you're an artist and you say, well, wait a minute, if commercial real estate completely plummets, me and three friends could open a gallery, show mm -hmm. two or three of our friends, and actually use it as a networking opportunity. Exactly. You know, oh, no, artists aren't supposed to open galleries. You know what? Anyone can open a gallery. You don't need a license. You don't need, you know, you don't need to go to fucking 100. Here's something that's going to suffer. $100,000 to go to art school. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> San Francisco Art Institute just closed. It yeah. Be yeah. How about one. that? How about yeah. that? Yeah. You know, and a few other ones will close too because the students, you know, it, it just it's just unaffordable. You know, it's just and, and mind you, when we go back to the grants, how many of those grants are allowing students to actually stay in school? A lot of these artists can't even graduate, you know, from this semester. Their final projects have, you know, taken a hit because of production costs and all that. How are those grants supporting this level of, you know, just completion? How about this? When more schools collapse, less people will be impressed with your degree. Your degree, yeah. So there you are saying, well, you should give me a show because I have a degree from this art school. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's such a, you know, that's like saying uh, in, in the, when the Indy 500 started, it's like, you know what you guys need to do is you need to have a horse and buggy race <laughs> the day before because these cars, that's one thing, but also horse and buggy race. Grad school degrees in fine art may become the equivalent of the horse and buggy. The horse and so, buggy, so, yep. So, you know, nobody's going to be impressed 
when a generation, the coming generation. Oh, here's another thing about art schools. I learned this from a guy who teaches at an art school. He said, everybody's talking about in two, the, that recession that happened in 2007. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened? People stopped having babies. There was a population mm. drop. 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2000. There was the opposite of a baby boom. There was a baby bust. Mm. They're all going to be 18, 19, 20 in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these schools are going to be losing out on, on lots of lots of funding. And uh, so I, I, I and the likelihood that those the baby bust goes into these what you would call non-performing mm -hmm. uh, majors instead of the the you know oh uh, oh and people say oh no it should be STEAM not STEM and it's like look look at the classifieds I mean everybody wants an engineer but you know everybody we all need nurses right now yeah right? so, so and, you know, and I'm thinking about that in terms of art like when we talked earlier about oversharing there's a lot of time for creativity so there's a lot of artists oversharing in their studio. Um, so when they when we finally come out of it and they take all of this good supply into these galleries and they realize there's no demand, then there may be a stop in production, you know, for a lot of artists to where um, the value of yeah exactly the value of things now raise because you're not getting so much pumped into the market. Here's another one: How many people have studio spaces and all of a sudden are going to go? Hey, wait a minute. If I did my art on my kitchen table, my kitchen table, I yep. save $600 a month. Right now, $600 a month, that's the equivalent of $6,000 a month. Exactly. Last, last, just last year, right? Yep. Yep. So look at, look at it that way. Um, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think like, and how many artists have a building where they have the master lease and other artists rent from them? And then mm -hmm. that's their income. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the houses of cards are all going to start collapsing. And uh, look, there's a lot of people in the art world that you know and that I know that we're never going to see again. Not because yep. they're going to die. <laughs> yeah, they're going to die. No, I know what you mean. Yep. But uh, it was the same thing in 2008. There was a small recession in 2001 after 9 11. Mm -hmm. You know, that lasted a year and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a big recession after the Berlin Wall fell, where. Um, especially in Southern California, where the def all the aerospace companies took yes. a big dump. There was a huge recession nationwide. I mean, that's what killed Soho and started Chelsea. Mm -hmm. So all mm -hmm. these galleries were like totally ensconced in Soho. They jumped to Chelsea because Chelsea was practically free rent. Yeah. So where, you know, so, you know, something's going to happen. I think there will always art itself as we know it and experience it uh, will never satisfy digitally as it does in person. And mm -hmm. I think, but, you know, maybe, and I, look, I really think this is going to have an ad, more and more adverse effect on New York mm -hmm, mm -hmm. than it will L.A. Because we're seeing the effect in New York where people share space. That was my subway, next, yeah, that subway. was my next thing. You know, I, I, like L.A., we're not getting it. We're, oh, you know, New Yorkers, oh, you're all in your bubbles. Mm -hmm. We're on the subway. We're a city. You're not a real city. Well, you know what? You, you breathed in somebody else's COVID, dude. Yeah. So yeah. I think this is going to have um, a bit of an impact. But they said, you know what? They said that after 9-11. They said, oh, all the big companies are going to move out of New York because they're afraid of a dirty bomb. The dirty bomb. Remember the dirty bomb? The dirty bomb, yeah. Get the, yeah. the duct tape in case there's a dirty bomb. And, yeah, the dirty bomb never came. So maybe maybe we're you – know, right now we're in the middle of it and we're, we're blinded. We're paranoid. We're panicky. It could be the same. It'll be the same but different. It'll be different. The difference will be people. Mm -hmm. There will be some people who were on the top in 2019, and then all of a sudden their stocks dropped and never came back. Never came back. Or they did. They made one wrong financial move, or their trust fund doesn't have as much money as it used to. Those that school doesn't have the endowment it used to, so it got rid of its art department. Yeah. And the per, the people who had the cush art jobs are just that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Do you anyway. think? Do you think like it will lead to like because after both of those periods that you mentioned, there was a lot of collusion and cartel creation, you know, and I mean by, you know, a lot of businesses that one may have gone out of business or two that may have gone out of business somehow formed, you know, like a Levy Gorby, you know, for example, to where they've, you know, turned two failing businesses into one stronger powerhouse. Do you see that happening to where, you'll have a, 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 a collusion or a conjoinment of two 
mid-tier galleries to where once this blows over, they become a larger entity. Oh, e easily, easily. You know, um, there were, you know, there was lots of galleries. We'll do, lot of, look, people are in this. If you're an art world life, you're an art world life or I'm an art world life, we're going to do whatever it takes, right? Yeah. I mean, all I got to do is write and put it on Facebook and yeah. hey, man, I, I'm a rock star. So, so I got a little easier than some people that need all sorts of things, right? You know, I mean, I, yeah. I, you know, I've curated a hundred shows. I'm trying to think, I don't even know how many shows I've, I don't have like a resume. I got to, if I had to, I, I've tried to make a resume and forgotten shit, you know, so, <laughs> um, but, but, um, you know, I, I, I couldn't tell you, uh, uh, you know, if I ever curate another show again, I don't know if I'm ever going to curate another show again, yeah, but, yeah. but I'm, I might, I mean, I've got plenty of ideas, but, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. who's going to rent the space now, right? Who's, where are we yeah. going to get the space? You know, things like that. Are we going to do it at an art? Are there going to be art fairs, art That's schools, cool. art fairs? Those are the big ones that I think we're going to see. Well, come. did you see the new version of the art fair? I don't know if everyone's seen that, but David Zwerner. David Zwerner has an art fair going on right now called Platform. It's via online to where they have Canal 47 and a few other galleries it, on it, their platform it, as an it, art fair. It, it, it's, a, it's, you know, and then you switch to Netflix and you never go back. You never go back. Yep. Yep. So, yep. yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. Let me tell you, getting somebody to come to your event. It as a gallery, if you get them to show up, they're a qualified customer. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. when you go to an art fair and you meet a collector there, because they're at the art fair, they're a qualified, qualified customer. customer. Yep. Okay, you can tell me, I don't care. Somebody could make, you know, you could pay some idiot $900 or $2,000 to make a video of a studio visit and they could put terrible music and make a real boring five minute thing. <laughs> and then, and and when, when, you, when Art Forum has 50,000 worldwide subscribers and you're, your video has 70,000 views. How come nobody's bought any? Fine. Yep. So the online thing, like, oh, this many yep. people click on, those are not qualified customers. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, it's, 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 there's a big, you know, I always try to tell artists I work with, if, when, when we get an art fair that we know qualified buyers are showing to, then mm -hmm. it's just, it's like rolling the dice at, after that point. But how are we going to, especially after this pandemic, how do you identify a qualified buyer? Because, again, those same buyers that were at the top of the market, you know, their buying power might have, you know, busted down. So they, when we're terming qualified, they might have dumped out of the qualified, you know, the, the qualifications of being qualified. You know, so are, are we going to soften or lower the barriers of entry of qualified collectors, you know, now because we have to stimulate the economy for artists now. No, I think uh, there will always be people who buy art. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, there will always be artists that the art sells, and and some people are on the top. You know, there was a lot of trendy artists in 2019 with big. Prices, oh yeah, and they'll never see those prices. Again. Never see them again. Yep. yep. You know the old rule never. used to be: look at the Whitney Biennial. Mm -hmm. And notice how often it's the last show on an artist's resume. So yep. you find out when you reach the top, then you, you slide pretty quick to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of galleries going to close, but there'll be other players. So some big collectors at the bottom of the market, and then they find out that they can't sell any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah. Anyway. Woo yeah, that's, it's, do you think, do you think anything like, like people will start to value product differentiation, you know, and I'm, and I'm talking about economies like, do you think people will start to buy sculpture more than painting because it's more of a... Do you think more people, do you think more people are gonna watch Netflix shows about pandemics than they will about cartoons? Well, they did at one point. <laughs> yeah, it'll be for a week. <laughs> at one yeah, point, then, yeah, yeah, then it regressed so, so back to the mean. Yeah, it, it, it's, I, I think it's, it's, it's going to be pretty interesting um, someone <laughs> said, the, com yeah, the, the, taco just, truck. <laughs> the comment that just came by said, the artist it's, it's Bill Harminski, I don't Bill know Harminski seen, said, I'm going to team up with a taco the truck. Taco, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen uh, my interview yesterday with Man One, but Man One has the Valletta truck, you know, and mm -hmm. it, he can he can easily, you know, go door to door, you know, with art or just, you know, hang out, you know, with his mask on and selling his art. Man One's probably the most prepared artist for <laughs> the for the COVID epidemic. 
the uh, art talk of ever. Um, so uh, who's name? Someone said name names. Whose names are we supposed to be naming? I don't know. I think uh, maybe a few of these uh, ideas that we're putting out and using these examples. I think we might want. <laughs> they might want us to. Okay, put well, some, like, some like, names like, here's up. an idea. Like, like, like. Okay, if you had to bet on one of these top major selling artists, are that, that they're mm -hmm. never going to sell another artwork for ten percent of their top art market price. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like for example, is Christopher Wool? He may go on and show and blah blah blah. But will Christopher Wool? From this day forward, ever publicly sell an artwork for ten percent of of his top, of his top net. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So, so you know, I mean, so that's I mean, you know, a lot of these people's art, uh, 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 art things are going to have their just going to get kicked, kicked. Yeah, they, a lot of artists have prisoners' dilemma right now. Like, I mean, they 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 have to, in a sense, collude with these galleries to sell their work because a lot of them lack the. Um, I'm not going to say the ability or the belief, but a lot of them lack the just the network of being able to sell themselves. So they feel like I got to fucking deal with these people. You know, I got to deal with them. And being that I'm they're trying to overshare online, they're trying to show, hey, I've got stock. I got stock. You know, come come work with me. Come deal with me. You know, how? I, I, it just, it just, it's, it's kind of, you know, I don't even know where I was going with that question, but it just seems like they're stuck, you know? Um, Look, there's going to be opportunities here for, for lesser known artists. Yeah. There's going to be big opportunities because uh, in economic, it, it, when it's tense, mm -hmm. people will actually, I think they'll gamble a little more. Mm -hmm. It's like when you've already got kicked in the nuts and you've lost 90% of your wealth, but you still want to be in the game yeah doing shit the old way maybe isn't you know doing shit with the usual suspects maybe it's not working yeah. so i think it's a great opportunity for artists but i always tell artists you got to get out there you got to get known you gotta get out just there, posting yeah. shit on instagram 